Dozens of times over the last few years, my favourite left-wing sparrow-born soy boy has wrote or waxed lyrical and said something along these lines. What, when we put people off and talk about cancel culture, what they mean is people on social media criticising them. Mm -hmm. That's basically what they're talking about. Yeah, been saying that with a straight face. Cancel culture doesn't exist. You might as well tell me grass is blue and the sky is green. It's been going on for about eight years and I can reel off dozens, if not hundreds of people that have been victims of it. From Nigel Farage getting his bank accounts cancelled to way back when, all the way back in 2015, probably the first major cancellation I can think of, the noble Lorette Tim Hunt was forced to resign after saying, girls fall in love with men and when you criticise them, they cry. <laughs> yeah, because everybody knows women don't cry. Oh, they never cry. You know, cry all the time. Men. Hairy ass men, <laughs> brimming with testosterone. Just thinking about it almost makes me well up. Anyway, I'm gonna have to cut this video short because my wife's out the back, burping, farting, scratching a fanny, and hewing logs. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, okay, joking aside, here's the story I want to talk about. Life comes at you fast when you're Owen Jones. Dozens of times over the last few years, he said that cancel culture doesn't exist. And what do I wake up to today? As Gaza crumbles, those speaking up for innocent Palestinians are being silenced and sacked. Well, twist my nipples and call me Frank. Owen appears to have been cancelled. How can that have happened, Owen? When, when it doesn't exist? That's weird, isn't it? I've never seen a unicorn in the car park at Aldi because um, they don't exist. And you've spent the last eight years telling me that cancel culture is not a thing. So what are you talking about? Weird, isn't it? Weird. He continues, simply opposing violence against civilians is to risk career and reputation. Where are the defenders of free speech now? You've put them all in the gulag, Owen. And if it wasn't for Elon Musk, there wouldn't be any on social media, would there? Because you were getting them all thrown off Twitter. Katie Hopkins, Tony Romo, there's loads of high profile casualties of cancel culture in social media. Even the humble angry bootneck has been threw off about eight times. I've had more Twitter accounts than hot dinners and I don't even, and I don't say anything particularly egregious, do I? My crime is simply disagreeing vociferously with overbearing authoritarian woke lunatics who insist that up is down and left is right and are on the wrong side of every single issue. Oh yeah, and constantly contradicting themselves over and over and over again. Because the only way to make sense of your ideology is to start every morning with a pint of gin, four lines of Colombian cuckoo dust and a brain hemorrhage. What exactly was the offence of Michael Eisen that led to him being sacked as editor of eLife, a prestigious peer-reviewed scientific journal for biomedical and life sciences? The Jewish American with Israeli family shared a post from the Onion headlined Dying Gazans criticised for not using last words to condemn Hamas. Yeah, okay, I don't think he should have been silenced. But again, the idea that people are just going to stand by and get the piss took out of them for years by people like you, Owen, and then suddenly be obsessed with coming to your defence when you get a little bit upset because the shoe's finally on the other foot. It's a bit laughable, isn't it? I'm not a Christian. I don't practice. If a man slaps you on your left cheek, you must offer him your right. I practice, if you slap me on my left cheek, I will stick the loaf on you and then give you a good shoeing in the car park. That's what I practice. So why should it be left to me to defend you when you've been pulling my pisser for eight years, you sniveling little worm? A dark humour spoke to an indisputable truth. Palestinians have died due to the logic of collective guilt, as endorsed by the Israeli president. The keynote speaker, Rashida Tlaib, the first ever elected Palestinian American congresswoman, has been targeted by a Republican smear campaign with an attempt to censure her for anti-Semitic activity and sympathising with terrorist organisations, all baseless attacks. Baseless attacks, really? From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, Rashida Tlaib retweeted and said it loudly over and over and over again because she's a lunatic. Essentially, she's defending the people that kidnapped hundreds of innocent women and children for no reason, 10 days before the Israelis even started malleting the Palestinians. And just to be clear, that's not mud staining her clothes around um, several of her orifices. That's blood, because I'll give you one guess what they've been up to 
with all the young women they've been capturing. At the end of the day, we can discuss the conflict till the cows come home and not come down to an easy conclusion because it's a complicated situation. But the simple fact that this little rat spent the last eight years denying that cancel culture exists and now is all of a sudden crying about its existence should tell you something about the people saying it and parroting it and reading that contemptible rag, The Guardian. Everything is a political game to them and they're playing to win. They don't believe the things they say. They know that this recent conflict was predominantly kicked off by Hamas butchering women and children. That's what started this particular bout. You can, you can come on either side of this conflict. I don't care. I'm a pasty blue-eyed Englishman with absolutely no dog in this hut. But this particular round of conflict was started by men purposely slaughtering innocent women and kids. I mean, they parachuted into a music festival and machine gunned a few hundred hippies for crying out loud. And damn you for making me defend hippies. So that's just the way of it. Owen is a jellyfish. All of the people that read and pay money for The Guardian are worms. And nothing they say is honest or even rational. But can we finally concede the fact, because we've now had it proven by my political foes, that cancel culture actually exists? Or do they have to strip us all of our bank accounts before that becomes a fact, do they? Anyway, that'll have to do you for the day because I've got work to do. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I will be back shortly. Have a great evening. Toodle pip. <laughs>